Former President Trump scored a major legal victory when a federal judge announced that she would be appointing an outside legal expert to review files seized by law enforcement from Mar-a-Lago, effectively halting the Justice Department's examination of the documents until the expert's work is finished. Our John Yang has more on the legal implications of the decision. Judy, in addition to screening for documents protected by attorney-client privilege, Judge Aileen Cannon took the unusual step of ordering the outside expert to see if any of the materials are protected by former Trump's executive privilege. Barbara McQuaid is a professor at the University of Michigan Law School and a former federal prosecutor. Uh, Barbara, thanks for joining us, especially just minutes after you've you finished lecturing, uh, as we can see in that uh, the lecture hall, lecture hall behind you. Having a special master uh, uh, screen these documents of this material for executive privilege asserted by a former president, is there any legal precedent for that? No, not at all, John. And in fact, I, I think that this order may be problematic uh, in that it, uh, it allows the special master to review for executive privilege without really defining what that means. Uh, a special master doesn't make legal decisions. A special master does sorting work. And so you need things to be clearly defined so that the special master can figure that out. Is every classified document created by an executive branch agency potentially protected by executive privilege? I don't think so. But the order is really not clear in that regard. You know, it's really nonsensical to think that a former president can assert executive privilege against the executive branch. We've seen some courts recognize a residual privilege in a former president that can be requested and then asserted by the incumbent president if he agrees, but only as to third parties like Congress when they're asking for information. The idea that you can assert executive privilege against the executive is really um, kind of illogical. And so it seems to me that the Justice Department needs to either appeal this order or it may be able to uh, manage this question by getting some clarification when it submits its order defining the parameters on Friday. And Barbara, you, you mentioned that, that former presidents in the past have asserted uh, their executive privilege by asking the incumbent president, the sitting president, to do that. But is it, uh, is it clear legally that a former president can assert uh, executive privilege? No. In fact, there's you know just some theoretical preservation of residual privilege to, you know, and the purpose of it, of course, is to protect candid communications and encourage candid communications between a president and his closest advisors while he is in office. And if the idea is that this could all be spilled out later, people might check themselves or it might have a chilling effect on their communications while in office. But it's the incumbent president, one executive, unitary executive, who gets to decide in the end whether to assert privilege. And so I think Joe Biden could take it under advisement and decide if he wanted to, to protect this privilege. But he has already said that he was deferring this decision to the acting archivist of the United States, who has said she is asserting the privilege in favor of the, or she is waiving the privilege. There is no privilege of these documents because they belong to the United States government. And so I just don't see how this piece of the order uh, can possibly take effect uh, and as I said, whether that requires an appeal or a clarification in the order that the Justice Department submits on Friday, I'm not sure the best vehicle for getting that. But at the moment, I think there's just at least a lack of clarity as to what she means by uh, filtering out executive pr privilege materials from the executive branch. In her order, the judge made much of, the, uh, of uh, Mr. Trump's status as a former president. But is she, in a way, creating a different standard for former presidents by doing this? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think on the one hand, it suggests that uh, she is violating the rule of law and this idea that no one is above the law by giving special treatment to Donald Trump simply because he's a prior president. But I also think that language might be there to prevent this case from being cited in other cases. So for example, if somebody in a garden variety bank robbery case in the future was subject of a search and said, I want a special master to review for privilege, uh, and cited this case, you know, the government could um, distinguish it by saying, no, no, look at this language. She says this is a unique situation. I think the phrase she uses is in a league of its own. Uh, and so it is uh, a, a very unique situation that required that unique status. And I will say, although the rule of law does mean that a president is not above the rule of law, 
the president does have some special privileges that the rest of us don't have, like executive privilege. Uh, that is not a thing that exists for the rest of us. And so her, the, the fact that she's treated him differently here doesn't bother me so much. And in fact, in some ways, I think is an effort to safeguard this opinion from being used in precedent in a way that could harm law enforcement going forward. This suit was filed not in the court uh, courthouse where the search warrant was approved, which has led some people to talk about uh, judge shopping. If, this, if the Justice Department does appeal, it would go to the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals where uh, six of the active judges are nominated by Trump. What does this say about the imprint that Trump has put on the federal judiciary? Oh, his influence is certainly uh, vast. One of his uh, probably uh, greatest achievements was his ability to get judges uh, on the courts, especially at the circuit level. And I think he worked very hard with the Federalist Society to find people who shared the uh, ideology uh, that he represented. And so I think that's one of the calculations that the Justice Department is going to have to go through here is uh, who might they draw on the, on the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals? Could this end up worse? One of the things that uh, the Justice Department always wants to avoid is making bad law. And so right now it's a district court opinion, so it has no precedential value. But if they appeal to, this, to the 11th Circuit and lose, now there's a real precedent that's binding on lower courts. And so you know, when they think about the cast of characters that they might draw, I think they have to think about uh, the long game here. Barbara McQuaid, still in her lecture hall at the University of Michigan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim.